what I want to do is to compare what the outcome would look like in a monopoly versus the same outcome in a perfectly competitive market. Now, this comparison is a little bit complicated by the fact that if you go back to this graph for a monopoly here, remember that we talked about a monopoly, a natural monopoly comes about oftentimes because of very large fixed costs in production, creating economies of scale in production, this downward slope of the average cost curve, and that downward slope could continue up into millions of units of the good. All right, well, that is a very different production process than the one we're describing over here, where minimum average cost can be found at a much lower level of output. So it's a little bit hard to make that comparison between a monopoly situation and a perfect competition situation because their cost functions are really likely to be very different between the two. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is kind of draw a comparison between the two by imagining something in reverse. Imagining we take all of the little firms that are producing here, all of these firms, and we just sort of sum up their products, their marginal costs and average costs across all of them. Imagining that a monopolist comes along and basically says, we're going to buy up all the little firms, the farms, let's say, and we're going to operate them together as if they were one big conglomerate. We're going to control the market by taking enough firms or farms over. And by virtue of that, we can set the price in the marketplace and maybe raise up our profitability. All right, so that's kind of the comparison that we're making here. So the average cost for the monopoly now and the marginal cost and the marginal revenue can be thought of as this monopolist that is now bought up all of the individual little firms that are producing the product and acting as if it was treating them as one, its own individual firm, and making decisions by adjusting the productions of the individual firms equally and accordingly in order to maximize its own profitability. All right? So if it did that, it's going to find where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue measured in this particular way. It's going to have the ability to adjust the price. It's going to charge a quantity QM, a price of PM, and the firm is going to be able to make profits given by this orange area right here. I think I have this listed on the next graph, yeah. So the monopoly result is set Q equals QM, price equals PM. I forgot to put those as subscripts. Consumer surplus is going to turn out to be the blue area right here, right? Profit is going to turn out to be the orange rectangle right here. And so what would happen in a monopoly market is the quantity would be here at QM. Surplus would accrue to consumers. Profits would accrue to the producers, this conglomerate operating all these little firms. And this would be the outcome in the marketplace. But suppose we split up that monopoly, forced all the individual firms to act on their own and to act as if they were perfectly competitive. The long run result we're going to see, the result we're likely to see in the end, is that the price will fall to a particular level where it minimizes the average cost. PC result is going to be choose a quantity Q star, where the price is equal to minimum average cost. And this, we're going to see, comes about a little bit later because of entry and exit of firms into the marketplace. That's what's going to drive the price to this particular level under perfect competition. But for now, I just want to give you a quick highlight about what the result would look like. So quantity goes up because of competition, just like we had said, moving to a duopoly or an oligopoly. Price comes down. And what we end up with in the end is that consumers are going to get surplus given by all of this area right here now. That's going to be consumer surplus in the market. And profits in the market are going to be driven to zero profits are zero. So the firms are not making any surplus. All of the surplus is accruing to consumers in the marketplace here. The firms are going to be just willing to produce that particular amount. But again, surplus accrues entirely to the consumers. Now, what about overall welfare? Well, overall welfare under, con under perfect competition is going to be given by just the consumer surplus plus profits, but profits are zero. So it's just consumer surplus. All of the Benefits are accruing consumers. In the monopoly situation, total surplus is given by this area right here. 
profits plus consumer surplus. So what happens as a result of competition is you're actually adding this much extra surplus and the green extra surplus. The total welfare in the economy overall is increasing because of the movement to competition. And that's an important result that we're going to come back and highlight again and again and think about the implications of that a little bit later. 